So hey, we've got our buddy Bryce Frank here, former national Muay Thai champion, ranked third in the world, expert coffee drinker. Very good at that. Yeah. Yes. Law enforcement officer and tactics and defensive instructor for his agency, right? Correct. You're talking a little bit about how to plug striking into grappling, and you've been working on a program for ILEDA, which yeah. is the International Law Enforcement Education Association Education. of sorts. Yep, absolutely. What happened basically, you know, when I was coaching fighters, mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of, when MMA kind of started taking off, I had a lot of Division One wrestlers and stuff that were getting into MMA and they didn't have any striking background. So they, they were coming to me to help, have me help them with striking and uh, had to kind of figure out how to take these guys and let them get, you know, take the fight into their world, into the grappling world, you know, okay. so they get to the kind of that dangerous range, right? Because this, you know, this range we're standing at right now is obviously dangerous because the, you know, the, the punches start flying and, mm -hmm. you know, the same everyone's got a puncher's chance exists for a reason, right? I may be a better boxer than you, but you might close your eyes, swing one time, connect with my chin, and the fight's over. We've all you know? seen that. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, we, we work on getting people through this dangerous space. And I kind of took some of those things that I did with the wrestlers, kind of um, simplified it to, to give people in a defensive setting kind of the basics that they need of striking to get through this range and to a safer range where they can clinch up and tie up hands and guys aren't free swinging anymore or access this to is a weapon. A, this is in the context of, law enforcement, context of law enforcement where that person has a duty that they got to act. They can't run away. Right, yeah. yeah. Or it could be in the context of self-defense too. Right, but I'm saying yeah. the class itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yeah, so this class. And, and, and I've done this, you know, I've done this... Uh, versions of this, uh, some seminars and striking for grapplers and kind of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gyms and stuff mm -hmm. where they don't really have bone fight striking programs. Um, I've done it in self-defense curriculums and, and I've worked it into some, you know, some in-service training and some training with some other agencies. So okay. now I'm kind of trying, trying to take it through through ILEDA and, and, you know, get it a little bigger, more, cool. more well accepted. Cool. So. so it's a couple hour course. Of course, we're not going to be able to go through that whole thing here, but yeah. key points. So class started. Yeah, so yes, key, sensei. Yeah. key points we talk about are, you know, stance, structure, and posture, okay. getting people to understand. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there. You see a lot of, you know, bladed stances and people standing side on and stuff like that. And really try to, to discourage that. I want hips, shoulders, and toes all facing, orientated at the person. You start talking about balance and stance and you're looking for right there. <laughs> I'm right here. Right. Uh, you know, getting people into a good stance. So, you know, it's kind of typical stance type thing we'll talk about is I just tell people stand shoulder width apart and, and take a step forward with your, with your, you know, for most people it's their left foot. If they're a right-handed person, you want to take a step forward with your left foot. So they've got a good even base. You've got balance front to back and side to side. Sounds a little bit like what we tell you on the range, doesn't it? Yeah, very similar to your, to your you know, to your uh, mm -hmm. isosceles stances. And so from here, you know, we get into this stance here and I want, you know, to, um, you want to bring the hands up, kind of, you know, if in a in a tight guard, you kind of high thumbs to the temples, but um, depend, that's going to depend on your situation too, right? So all I'm thinking about is when I can hit him in the dick. Right, that's what we're looking for, right? The dick shot. <laughs> so as far as uh, strikes, you know, we do a few basic strikes. There's a lot of movement drills, okay. uh, stance structure movement, uh, but we'll go into some of the strikes that we do so that you know. You know, I, I, I teach a lot on the overhand. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's a very robust strike. Why do you like it so much? I like it so much because it, it can do so many things for me. So the overhand can be used to get distance, to separate from you. It can be used to close distance, to attach to you. It's a very powerful strike, so um, it, it can generate a lot of damage. Um, and that, the reason I, that's the reason I like it so much. Is it's what are you robust. targeting with the overhand? Uh, generally look towards the mask area here. So from the from the bridge of the nose, out along the jawline, down here like this. This is the target area here. Okay. You know, I call it the mask, but right, you know, right bridge of the nose to the to the uh, jaw and down the jawline here. Okay. You know, um, those are the areas that we're really looking to, to make uh, contact with. You know, one of the things that I tell people actually is a lot of times aim for the throat. We're probably not going to actually hit the throat because the chin will be down, but that's going to put us right where we need to be. As I see. You know, so, um, you know, when you get really good, you got... And if the guy got, ducks into it, exactly. you just hit him up higher. Yeah. And if, if you, you know, you get a lot of reps in and tons of practice, you can start getting really specific with your punch targeting. But up to that point, just say, aim for the throat. I see. Yeah. You know, um, and then, you know, we'll go from there. 
So it's two, three things really, but the, the two things we need to talk about for first to build, for building power are thrust and torque, okay? So thrust drives off, is, is driving off the back foot here as I'll push off this back toe. And when we, when we teach class, we get into like how to make a fist properly and all that stuff too, you know, but we got the gloves on right now because- I was so real quick. Sure. Making a fist, Make, basics. Yeah, making a fist. The basics to making a fist is what I want to do is I want to take my hand, I want to close the first set of knuckles down like so, second set of knuckles down like so. Thumb is going to cover one and a half knuckles, okay? And that's basically how I'll butt dress the fist to make a good strong fist. Now, the knuckles I'm going to hit with are going to depend on the angle of the strike, but basically I want a straight line from knuckles through the elbow, okay? So if I'm hitting over and down, like this, it's gonna be the top two knuckles. If I'm coming up from underneath, I'll hit with the bottom three knuckles. Hmm. All right, so, okay. um, and these are the types of things that I think you don't see a lot in good striking curriculums anymore because so much of what we do is with gloves on all the time, so it kind of gets neglected. I see. You know, if you look at the old school, you know, look at books from, you know, Jack Dempsey and stuff like this, back in the days when, you know, bare knuckle boxing was still kind of a thing. Mm -hmm, was, you know, mm -hmm. the Jack, Jack, Jack that Dempsey was not a bare knuckle boxer, but it wasn't, we weren't that far removed. Right, from right, that. right. You're saying back at that time. Yeah, that, that these guys would have a better understanding of how to use the knuckles when they when hands weren't protected by the Sure, shoulder. sure. You know, so, um, but that's the main thing is, you know, make sure the, foot, the fist is butt dressed really well and I have the striking knuckles in line with the elbow when I hit. Just a training point, so we're training with gloves on because mm -hmm. you can't drive your thumb and make that same fist. How do you uh, develop that skill? Right, so whenever we're working like more power punching, like we're gonna work here in a minute, mm -hmm. I have guys glove up, okay? okay? But one of the things we'll do kind of at the end of a session a lot of times is just like you and I just did, is we'll just, we'll work it just Empty hand to empty hand, mm -hmm. and not working so much on power, but just on the accuracy and screwing mm -hmm. that shot. Gotcha. You know, um, again, like we were talking about with the gun grappling and stuff, a little bit of that goes a long way. You don't need to do tons of it. You know, mm -hmm. a round mm -hmm. or two at the end of your session, you know, consistently will be good. Yeah. You know, so, thrust and torque. All right. So pushing off that back toe is going to develop thrust, and torque is going to come from the rotation of my body. Okay. So. As I, as I push off this back toe and drive, I'll lift my glove up here, as I push off this back toe and drive here, and then I rotate my body, the torque comes from my body and it also comes from my wrist. You see, I torque my wrist as you get to, all right? So the greater the distance, the more thrust I need and the less hmm. torque. The closer the distance, it's all torque and no thrust. Jeez. <laughs> so when we close distances, it's all torque and, and very little thrust. But out here, I'm pushing off that back toe and driving. You see his whole body? Yeah. Yeah. So as I step in here and I hit like so. All right. All right. So I'm going to have you throw a few. All right. Right here. Good. All right, so let's bring this shot. What I want you to do with your shot is I want you to chop it down right at the very end. Okay? Chop it down. Yep, so I'm gonna show this to you. As I hit and I chop down. Okay, so when I'm hitting my target like this, I hit and I chop down and that sits this guy down. All right. All right, so as this strikes, do it again, please. Feel how that chops down yeah. at the very end of the shot? So it's not that you're angling down. Think like chopping wood, right? At the very end of the shot, I chop that shot okay. down into my target here. I gotcha. Cool. All right. There you go. Good. Good. As I come in closer, you're going to use more. You're not going to push off as much, but you're going to really torque more. There you go. Chop down, down. It's really tor torque that wrist over at the end. Is the wrist bending? Like this, watch here. This one, and go right here. Okay. See that torque? Boom, I kind of chop down. That's what makes it, it's, what makes it an overhand is how I finish the punch, not how I necessarily start it. Because I, I can still throw it straight and drop it down. I see. All right. So it's a dropping, dropping down on your punch at the very end. This is a little accent on the punch that a lot of people miss that point. Makes a lot of sense. Never heard that nuance. Okay, so 
Right. That's it. Good. Yes. You feel that's already mm -hmm. hitting. That's already hitting way harder. Good. Now, if I were to take a step back, we're gonna we're gonna use a little more thrust and push this shot. Am longer. I going to? You don't need to hit. So here's the thing. No. Do you feel at this range that we're standing right now? Do you feel like you can get clipped on a chin with the right hand at this range? I don't think so. Relax. <laughs> Relax. Relax. Okay. I still got another inch or two I can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you know, this is from, you know, one of the things that um, I did very well as a fighter was was able to really fight on the perimeter very well and have guys tell me I didn't even think I was close enough to get hit and was getting touched. Gotcha. You know? um, so, from out, you know, people need to understand expanding. I'm, just, I'm not going to hit you, I just want to reach out. Okay. Yeah. 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 So people need to understand the expanding and contracting ranges of the fight. Because what I tell people all the time is, you know, can you throw your jab at me and touch me from right there? Yeah, barely. Well, I suppose right? I, could, I could probably yeah. really come off right. my foot. Yeah. But what I can do here, relax, relax, <laughs> relax. <laughs> here, boom. And I come back and your, and your jab misses me cold. You know? Sure, because sure. Because people don't, they don't understand how to play those ranges. I got you. you know? And it, that's just years and years and years. I know okay. that if we're right here, I can hit you with the right hand. But if you take that step back that you just took, now I can't. Yeah. You know? I got you. So it's the difference between this. Nope, stay where you're at. The difference between this and this. It's four inches. Nothing. Yeah. Knockout. <laughs> you know? But if you don't, if, if you're not accustomed to that, you're then not going to be You're, gonna you're not getting that four hours. No. Every four years. No, absolutely. You, that's something you have to train over and over again, that space repetition. Mm -hmm. Working it on a bag, working it on a pack, working it with a partner, right? Is getting that space repetition over and over again. Teaching your brain how far you can be for yeah, that contact. They still have action. power when it's there, They still too. have power, right. You know? okay. And then understanding also that generating power now is different because this is a lot, I need a lot of thrust here to generate power. Boom. But when we're here, thrust is going to, it's going to get me in a clinch. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm going for a dick shot, shot that right. I've been looking yeah. for. Yeah, he's been looking for that all day. Yes. But in this range, I need a lot of torque and not much, not much thrust to generate power. Okay. So now, the other problem with striking is a lot of striking programs is everything is one way traffic. Everything's one way traffic, right? So we put on pads, we and and we hit, or we hit the bag, and there's nothing ever coming back. I at see. Us, right. So. Um, what we need to start thinking about is building defense into our offense. All right. So what? Keep going. That's right. What we're going to do now is, as I throw this overhand right, I want to think about the third thing. The first thing is the first two things are thrust and torque, and the last thing is, is head positioning. What I do with my head. Okay. So when I throw this overhand right like this, notice I put my head over my front knee. Okay. Okay. So my head is. I can go directly over my front knee. I'm good. I can't go forward in my front knee, or I'm out of posture. Okay. As long as my head stays. In between my front knee and my back knee, I'm okay. If I start getting too far back, I'm out of posture, I'm gonna get clipped, mm -hmm. right? That's how we saw Anderson Silva got dropped by Chris White, right? If I start getting forward in my front knee, and again, I'm out of posture, and I'm not gonna have any power, I can get clipped, I can run into something, okay? But if I can stay right here, boom. Now, if I'm throwing this, I'm not gonna throw it, but if I'm throwing this at your chin here, and you're throwing your shot at me at the same time, you're, you're going clear past here. You don't have any, any power right there, right? So I, if I do, but yeah, some, you most do, people, but most people don't. Yeah. But if you, because you're going to throw it where my head is, right? Yeah, yeah. So they call this zigzagging in boxing. So if you're throwing yeah, it, it's, it's kind of a swat yeah. fly thing. If you're throwing it where my head's at right now, boom. All right. And by doing that, by dropping my head into the end of the shot, I, I sink a little more power into the end of my shot. And I also get my, I, I build that, that defense into my offense and get my I head off you. the line. By the way, I'm making jokes, so don't be posting comments there. Yeah. So as you throw that shot now, I want you to oh. slip that head off line. Boom, there you go. Right over your front knee. That's it. Nice. Good. Big increase in power. Let's drop that head just a little bit right at the end. So give me a target. See how I drop it head right at the end, and I'm hidden behind my shoulder. Let me see, let me see that again. Yep. So you're... Yeah, so watch here. I see. Everything's in, in line over my, my... head's in line over my knee, and, I, and I'm hidden behind my shoulder. There you go. Eyes on me, though. I'm just looking at where my head is in relationship <laughs> to my knee. There you go. 
now I want you to make that punch. I want you to stay on the end of the punch, okay? So you see here you've got his shoulders protecting you here. If I were throwing a straight, it's missing you here. Mm -hmm. and your hand is protecting you on this side if I were coming with some kind of hook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got that defense built into our offense now. So this is why I like the overhand so much. It's a very powerful strike. It can be used, again, to, you know, if we're in here, I, boom, I can throw this hard shot and, and get the hell out of Dodge if that's appropriate for the situation. Mm -hmm. The other thing I can do is I can use this to attach to people too. This is what we go into more in the actual seminars and okay. stuff. But for, so if I throw this overhand right here, boom, I can stick this to you here and come in and make a frame and, and make my frame yeah. and get my attachment. You know, okay. if you want to see somebody who was amazing at that as a professional boxer was Roberto Duran. Okay. Yeah, you know, he would throw this shot, boom, and he would stick to people and he'd come in and he'd tie it. You know, and. Uh, you know, they can do that with a hook too, but you know, that's another whole other lesson. Sure, sure, you know? sure. So what I what I like what I try to teach people to do is drive forward with this shot, boom, and attach and drive in and get their tie up their limbs and get their clinch from there. Makes good know? sense. And uh, or if this, it's appropriate for the situation, you're gonna blast through the guy and get out of there. And that versus like a regular cross because you're driving down, it kinda takes you right, right into it. Space. Absolutely. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, you know, those are the basic lessons of the overhand. It just takes a lot of work, a lot of space repetition, you know, and you just get people, even if you don't have a partner, you can just kind of sit here and work on throwing, you know, getting yourself in a position and throwing head over the knee, getting the thrust here and the torque here. One more key point on this, and it's something that I see people do a lot, is everything moves at one time, right? So when they turn, everything turns. If you notice, it's subtle, but if you notice, my whole body is turning and my hand is the last thing to go. A slingshot. Now. Like a slingshot. So I get everything moving and the last thing to go is my hand. You know, because that, that's that proper sequencing of power, right? I tell people, think like a bat, like a batter, you know, a batter. He doesn't move the bat with his body. His body's moving through and the bat's coming behind it. Same type of premise here, is I get my whole body moving, Mm -hmm. And my arm slingshots behind me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Give that a try. Sure. All right. Just want to think about that. What you're saying. Yep. Uh, there you go. Nice. And I want you to really, like, way more than you would normally. I want you to kind of consciously hold your arm back a little bit. Okay. Hold it back. Yeah. So you're gonna start turning, and I make, I make it like okay. a two-stage process. Okay. One, two. Okay. <laughs> I can't stop myself. All right. There you go. Nice. There's a lot of that, power on that one. That one felt good? Yeah. I'm having to like force myself to. Yeah. It's, so. it's, a, it's a complicated thing. Another thing you can do if you've got a partner working on a bag or something, is I could just stand here and have you go ahead and rotate like you're gonna punch, but I just won't let you. And now, you just keep that, tor that torque, you're all wound up, and now I move my hand and your hand's gonna go, boom. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. you could do that, have the bag out in front of you, you're yeah. saying partner holds the hand. Partner Let's, can we do this real quick? Yeah. We're right here on the water bag, so we're in the light. Okay. Now you're gonna start turning, and once I release the hand, you're just gonna let it go like a rubber band. There you go. Okay. There you go. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it fell off balance a little, little did, bit. But but yeah. But you get you start to understand the process. Yeah. You know, so you obviously as you start developing one thing, you have to make you know, you have to make corrections to your balance and everything. Because sure, sure. your balance points are different than they would be how you normally throw in the right hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm a big believer in like you just punch around the defense. You don't necessarily throw straights or, or circular punches. I just punch around the defense. You know, good a good strike will decide mid strike exactly where I'm going to hit. You know, but that takes a lot of repetition, obviously. Sure. Yeah. You know, um, kind of probably like a basketball player that's jumping and moving. And yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but generally, like base level understanding, get these guys target in the throat, thrust torque and head position and get them sequencing the punch properly. You know, if you could, if I could make those four, four adjustments, that's the adjustments I try to make to people when I have a short period of time. So the takeaways from this 
block of instruction for ILEDA? Mm -hmm. What's the what is what is the practitioner that comes to this class? What is he leaving with or she leaving? They are going to be the idea is I'm not creating a new defensive tactics system for them. I'm giving them a few striking tools to plug into their existing defensive tactics curriculum. And what's going to happen is they're going to leave there being able to throw punches much harder than they could when they came in. Cool. No, that's never a bad thing. No. Because <laughs> yeah, if you're going to do it, it's got to be effective. Sure, right? sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, do you go out and do classes on this stuff? Can a department or uh, uh, an agency hire you to come out and do that? Absolutely. How do they find you? Uh, probably the easiest way now is is just uh, you know Instagram, Bryce Frank, B R Y C E F R A N C K on Instagram. Okay, and they can talk to you, set it up. Yeah. They come out. You'll come out, create a create a, a plan for their people and yeah. Or through. you know martial arts schools or self defense too. You know, I work in all those spaces. You know, okay. I try to. I try to keep things, you know, I look for things that are, are robust and they work across mm -hmm. multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. That's how I met you, was at uh, SBG Gym, Pulse. Yes, Pulse Rush. Pulse Rush, yeah, yeah. Super cool. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, man. Yeah. And uh, now I've got something new to work on. Yeah, work on sequencing that punch, getting down. And those are the little subtleties that you just, you know, you don't see a lot of that, you know, because there's just, there's not a lot of um, super qualified striking coaches out there. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, what do you think that is? You know, I, I think that um, a lot of the masters in Canada, especially boxing, a lot of the really great masters have deceased, and um, I think you know what you see is a lot of they created a generations of great fighters, well, and it. they didn't pass that on yeah. to. They probably, they probably created generations of great fighters, but maybe not necessarily generations of great trainers. Great trainers and coaches. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes good sense. Yeah.